Alright, let's welcome back everyone to the 54th chapter of the Explorer Juice Arsenal series featuring me, Asian Psycho, aka Toby Sniper 98, and this time we're going to be taking a look at the XK8 Assault Rifle. This is quite the quirky assault rifle. It's so quirky in fact that I actually love this thing. Um, it's, it's a very good assault rifle, and interestingly enough, well I shouldn't say really interestingly enough, because it's so quirky that not many people are comfortable with the X using the XK8, but for some reason it feels really it feels really good in my hands yes, that's what she said too um, of course I won't be able to hear that anytime soon, you know, because I'm Asian <laughs> anyways, anyone to the side the XK8 uh, assault rifle let's get started on review on the XK8 so a little bit of background information on the XK8, it is apparently called the Deu XK8, or the Dar 21. Um, I'm just looking at the comments with the uh, description on this, and apparently it's a Korean assault rifle. I didn't know that. I knew that for a fact that the K2 was a Korean assault rifle, but I never knew that the XK8 was Korean. So hmm, interesting. So um, yeah, it does. Cut, or when the one day sales were out anyway, it did cost 1,100 GP for one day, which is kind of on the pricier side because I mean you can de get like the AUG A1, which is almost the same thing. Which is well, the AG is more powerful, so maybe the AG is a, li a little bit better of a deal uh, at for like nine, only 950 GP. So 1100 GP is kind of a, a like a unwieldy price tag for an assault rifle, anyways. Um, and uh, it does cost 5,390 GP for a week. And of course, it is unlocked at the rank of Command Sergeant Major Three. So moving on to the statistics on the of the XK8. The damage on the SK is at a 39, so this is as powerful as your uh, M416 CDB. However, I have the feeling that it is a little bit more powerful than what Commander's, the Commander's Wiki stats says. It feels like it has the damage of an AGA1. In fact, the SK8, for whatever reason, it may, it might be, it might just be because of the fact that you know it has a pre chat scope on it, and you know the uh, the forced uh, sniper scope on the SK8 is exactly identical to the uh, scope you can find on the AGA1. It may be because of that that I feel like it, the X, using the, and whenever I use the XK8, I'm always reminded of the uh, the AUG A1. I don't know, I'm not too sure about that, but the XK8 um, it's got pretty good damage. Um, I mean, it's it's more powerful than the M4A1, and uh, in my experience anyway, the M4A1's damage is pretty good, and um, it does kill pretty fast, and that's that's what the SK is all about. However. That being said, even though the damage is pretty good on the XK8 at range, uh, moving on to the damage drop off here, um, the damage drop off on the XK8 is kind of on the worst side for assault rifles, unfortunately enough. Um, even though it does have a sniper scope, uh, and um, you know you might think you might think that you know it's meant for long range combat, it's it's more the sniper scope on the SK8 is more so intended for middle range combat, and I'll get into why in a little second here when we talk about recoil. You guys will probably know where I'm going, trying to go with this, but for the time being anyway, the damage drop off on the SK8 is not very good. Um, oftentimes, like maybe it's like maybe this is where you know the dam the fact that it has only 39 damage as compared to like the AUG. 43 damage uh, comes into play because um, the SK8 it can take up to like I, I don't, I'm, I'm just gonna give an estimate here because I, I haven't really tested this out for myself for sure but the SK8 I felt like I've shot at people like at least I don't know more than 10 times at like at like at like long distance engagements in order to put them down and um, I mean that's not in a, that's not the that's not that's not the best position you want to be in with an assault rifle you want to take as little bullets as possible to kill someone at, especially at long range but the XK unfortunately the damage is the damage profile on it, it's it's not very good it's definitely not the best and um, that's one of the cons about the SK the fact that its damage drop off is a little bit harsh uh, moving on to portability. Portability is is uh, it's pretty moderate for an assault rifle. I mean, it's still faster than your your G36E or your AK47 at 59, but it's not as fast as you know your M4A1. I it's faster than your AUG1, technically speaking, anyway. But um, yeah, its portability is um, quite moderate, so it's nothing to worry. It's not it's not much to worry about for that matter. Um, rate of fire is at a 74, oh, so um, it does have the same rate of fire as it. say the M4A1, M416, AUG1, all those other uh, assault rifles that have 74 rate of fire. Its accuracy is at an 86, and um, this 
pretty much makes it on par, if not identical to the AGA1. I feel like they have pretty similar uh, accuracy stats. Maybe the XA8 has uh, a point higher of accuracy. I'm not, I can't be too sure. It's been some time since I last reviewed the AGA1 anyway. So, um, yeah, this accuracy is pretty good. And, I mean, it should be because it's got a sniper scope on it. I mean, you know, <laughs> intent. And, um, yeah, uh, re but let's let's talk about their accuracy a little bit when we talk about the sniper scope again. So, uh, recoil, recoil. Here's where the SK is uh, really really bad. The SK8's recoil is at a 68. This is as bad as a G36E's. And if you guys have never used a G36E before, and which I'm pretty sure most of you have, if you haven't, then you're kind of missing out. But anyways, the I can, the recoil on the uh, SK is is kind of batshit terrible. Yeah, it's pretty bad. This is probably the main reason why most people do not are not com comfortable using the XK8. Not only does it start with the uh, the hip fire spread of a G36E, like the really big uh, crosshairs, not unlike the M4A1 or M416, but also its recoil spread and kickback both are really, really bad. Like I'm talking like really bad, almost X M4 or not. What am I talking about? Almost AK47 status bad. Like, yeah, like, you, you fire this thing and you'd be like, whoa, this thing has a recoil. And, um, I mean, compared to the G36E, like, the G36E, the spread is pretty, the maximum spread is pretty bad, but it, it takes a few bullets to get there. The, with the XK8, like, after two bullets, your recoil spread starts, like, enlarging like crazy. It's like, what the fuck? Like, holy shit. Like, what's with this recoil, man? I didn't, I didn't sign up for this. And, um, it, it, that's kind of like the normal reaction that people would have. I mean, I'm just guessing at this end. I could be, just be a complete retard for saying this, but it's, yeah, it's pretty bad. And, um, it, once again, it's one of the main reasons why people do not like the SK-8. Just the recoil is just so heavy for them that they don't find any practical use out of the SK-8. And um, for me personally, I've always used, I've always loved using the G36E and the uh, AK-47. So handling the recoil on this isn't much of a problem for me personally. But many people, you know, can't afford to um, try to maintain recoil on these kinds of heavy recoil weapons. So um, they don't like the SK-8. That's their opinion, though. And um, I mean. I can understand, because recoil spread is really bad, the recoil kickback is also really bad, I mean, let's see, thinking about the recoil pattern, or the recoil uh, kickback on the SK-8, it feels like the SK-8 kind of kicks diagonally, I'm not too sure, but anyways, if you stand still with the SK-8 and you just spray and you just hold down the left click, you'll know that it kicks around like a lot so <laughs> do be careful whenever you're using the uh, the xk8 because the recoil is pretty terrible and you can eat your aim can be easily thrown off like at any moment so you need to be able to control the recoil with the sk8 um let's see so overall we control recoil controllability um just something something's up here is pretty bad and it's very very difficult controlling the recoil on the sk8 my personal recommendation is that you burst with this weapon and thankfully enough this x the sk8 does come with a three round burst option so if you guys are fans of you know use a three round burst because maybe the recoil is a little bit too much for you guys um then it's there for your it's there for your convenient use and this i guess i suppose that's another reason why it reminds me of the aga1 because both the aga1 and the xk8 both have a three round burst option so that's a very good and that's a very good thing uh, for those of you guys who want need help uh, controlling the recoil if you don't really like attack fire and you just want to burst plus burst fire the burst fire mode does you know shrink the uh the hit fire spread of, of your xk as well so there you go uh, moving on to the tap fire ability. The tap fire ability on the SK-8 is very, very, compared to other assault rifles anyway, is not very good. I mean, you can still tap fire with it, but the rate at which you're going to be tap firing is like this. And that's not very fast if you if you compare it to like other weapons like the M4A1, the M416, or the M416B for that matter. Like those weapons, you can be like da 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 da. But then with the XK8, you can't you can't afford to do that because the recoil is just so heavy that if you try to tap over, to, if you try to tap fire faster than it allows, then you'll easily over tap fire and the gun will it won't jam, but the 
the shots won't go where you intend, intended to aim at. So you need to be able to control the uh, tap fire ability on this. And that's why long range, long range distance, distance engagements are not very good for the SKA because your because your tap fire ability, the rate at which you tap fire is going to be much slower than you uh, than you would with other assault rifles like say the M4A1. You obviously will be taking a little bit longer to kill them. And at long range distance engagements, um because you know the damage drops off and you'll be needing to take more shots to kill them unless you headshot them uh, which we'll get into the, in a second here about the aka unless you headshot them you're going to be sitting there for quite a little while compared to other assault rifles trying to tap right this guy to death and during that time they might either kill you or be have the time to run away so um, that's why the SKA, I don't recommend it for long range engagements, um, and because of that, also another thing about the, uh, the recoil aspect of the SKA is that when you scope in and you try tap firing, the kickback on this thing is ridiculous. It's as, it's even worse than the AGA ones, and that's pretty hard to believe, and, um, it's pretty bad. Uh, trust me, it's very, very bad. And um, that's why another reason why the tapper ability is not very good on the X-88. Not only do you have to wait for the recoil to settle back down to its original position, but also, you need to, you know, you need to um, be careful that you don't over tap fire, which is extremely easy to do when you have the SK-8, so. Uh, moving on to the sprint drawback. The sprint drawback is, um, I want to say it's pretty, uh, it's a little bit faster than average for assault rifles. Um, it, it has the same sprinting animation as the FS-2000 and the uh, FS-2000 variants, so um, if you want to think of that as, like, you know, a good thing then so be it um draw speed uh, the draw speed is it should be it has the same draw animation as the fs 2000 but i think the actual draw speed is um a little bit slower than the fs 2000 and the, its other variants so unfortunately that's not very good but um there you go center speed on the sk is quite slow compared to other assault rifles like it has the same i don't want to say it has the same but it reminds me of the center speeds on like say the g36e and the ak-47 it's not it's not very fast and um unfortunately that's that's unfortunate because you know you're gonna be you're gonna have to wait longer for the recoil spread to settle back into the original position and um yeah you might yeah that might cost you a few lives um, moving on to the reload speed. Now, this is another very, very bad con about the SK-8. The SK-8 has insanely slow reload speed. Ugh, that's, that's my personal pet peeve about the SK-8. Like, my god, this thing has such slow reload speed. Like, honestly, next on, you, you had to nerf, you had to make this gun so bad. Like, not, I'm not saying the XK, XK is bad, but you had to give the XK so many disadvantages. Now you have to slap it with the, yeah, basically you have to pimp slack it. Pimp, pimp slack, what the hell is that? Pimp slap it if across the face with a slow reload speed. Now that's like, ugh. I can't take it anymore, but um, I just, uh, don't. Just kidding. I can I, I can still use XK and and don't worry, I will use it uh, more in the future. But I mean, the reload speed is painfully slow. I mean, if you don't have an ex if you don't have any magazine modifications, I mean, it's pretty manageable. I mean, it's not it's not bad by any means, but it's not good either. But when you slap an XM at one on the XK, which I tend to do with all my assault rifles, like if it's not if it's not like a assault rifle that starts with 35 rounds, like with an enhanced magazine size then th if it only starts with 30 rounds or if it starts with less you know obviously unless, you, unless it's a vtr we can't change it which kind of sucks but that's another story then you know i typically slap on xm mag ones on it however with the sk8 if you slap an xm mag one on that thing the reload speed literally goes down by a second and a half it I'm, pro I'm pretty sure I'm exaggerating, but it's it it, it the having an extended mag one on your FK8 is it makes the reload speed so noticeably slow that you can feel it like it's impossible to miss. Like say like the M4A1, like for a long time for a longest time I didn't realize that extended mag one having extended mag one on M4A1 was supposed to slow down the reload speed, but um, I never really realized it until like you know maybe about two years into my comrades career I was like oh this thing actually has slow re reload speed because my extended one whatever but xk8 as soon as i put an xm1 on it i knew it's like oh my god this real speed is absolutely horrendous so do not put anything more than xm1 on your xk8 god help you if you put an xm2 on that thing you've been waiting for like until the sun blows up to reload that thing so there you go reload speed is obviously not <laughs> not a good thing about the xk8
Fire mode. So we already covered this. Um, it's available in full and automatic and three round burst. So that's a nice that's a nice touch. That next one has a uh, given the XK8 luck. This is where the XKA is extremely quirky. The XKA is one of those few assault rifles in this game that tend to give me the most random headshots ever. This and this is why I categorize the XK8 in a little like a like a like a family of quirky guns that include the KH2002 and the uh, what was the other one the Hawa Type 89. Those those assault rifles are really weird in that they give me the most random headshots ever. Like I'd be aiming for like the lower body region of my targets, and suddenly the spray will get so big that suddenly one of the bullets, one of the bullets will just go straight off straight off target and nail them straight ahead. And I get a headshot. I'd be like, um. Okay, I wasn't really aiming there, but that's okay. I'll take it. And it does it so consistently that I'm pretty sure Nexon has coded into the K8 K8, uh, or the SK8 somewhere that you, out of certain a uh, certain many kills, you will uh, you will be guaranteed to get at least this many headshots. I don't know. That's probably me being weird, but I get so many random headshots with the SK8 that it's it's like whoa. It, this this is it's funny because this this fact about the, or I shouldn't really say fact, but this perception of mine about the XK8 also applies to uh, when I try and tap fire people. You'll see in this, you'll see in some of the gameplays here with the SK8 that uh, I get the most random headshots while tap firing at long range across oil rig. Now that gets me every single time. Like, I don't even aim for headshots and I still get them anyway. Like, what? <laughs> What's going on? But anyways, so that's his uh, luck right there. So if you're looking for a gun that uh, gets you a lot of random headshots, then the XK8 is good for you i suppose i mean it could be differ from person to person but that's what that's how it goes for me ammo capacity is standard uh 30 round magazine of out of uh or with 90 rounds in reserve nothing special there keep those characteristics so um yeah it looks like a very very drab metallic assault rifle it is bulb up and um it does have its pre attached or it, it does have an, uh, a forced um the AUGA1 scope, apparently, according to the comments book, it's called the Swarovski uh, scope with the uh, sort of center uh, with the uh, singular, uh, what is it, singular dot in it, and um, yeah, it it it's very unique in its design. Um, not not because of the fact that it's a bullpup, but if you look at the XK8, you'll know like, oh yeah, this is the XK8. Once you know, once you realize that it is the XK8 for that matter. Um, muzzle noise. So the muzzle noise, um, it's got a very very low frequency kind of noise like it sounds very very low and it's not it doesn't sound very loud at all um i mean that's just my opinion anyway but um yeah you'll definitely it's it's got a unique firing noise and if you hear it going off if you know it's the xke then there you can you don't have to mistake it for anything else it's, it's you'll know that definitely someone's using the xke when someone's firing with it so um, attachment options. You can only attach suppressors or uh, magazine modifications. I personally do not recommend a an extended, uh, extended magazine of any sort on the SK8. This is probably one of the few assault rifles I'm actually going to uh, re recommend a uh, a fast loader magazine on because just of how how slow the reload speed is. So there you go. Um, as for suppressors, I don't really think suppressors are necessary because I mean it's reco recoil. You're not going to be doing yourself any favors if you put a, if you put a silencer on XK. I mean, in general, silencers aren't very good uh, to use on assault rifles anyway, unless they're like high damage assault rifles. But um, yeah, there you go. Um, whether or not it's fire team worthy, um, <sighs> that's kind of a catch because. Most assault rifles are pretty good at uh, any kind of fire team, but for the SK-8, it's like the recoil spray is so bad that why would you even use it? So, I don't know. I I'm going to have to say, like, no, because there are so many other assault rifles that you can use uh, that definitely beat out the SK-8, so there you go. Um, whether or not it's quarantine worthy, well, most assault rifles aren't really, you know, meant for quarantine anyway, because it's not really going to do you any favors to lug around, around assault rifles while you're trying to free run, so, I mean, that's my guess anyway, I don't know about you, but that's what I think. So, no, it is not it is not quarantine worthy. As for my frank personal opinions on the SK-8, the SK-8 is definitely an extremely quirky assault rifle, um, there's no doubt about it. It has its own slew of, uh, it has its own slew of, you know, cons that do turn off on the majority of uh combat arms players from using it because you know i mean we, we can go down the list here it's got bad damage drop off at range it's got 
you know, it's, it doesn't have the best recoil in the world. In fact, it's pretty shitty in terms of recoil. Its tamperability isn't very great. And um, to, to add on that, the uh, whenever you try to tap fire, the shot, your, each of your shots go up like three feet up into the air, and you can't tap over tap fire, which and which will you know kick your aim off like so off target. You're, you're so the person standing next to your target is gonna get hit more often than your own target, the person you're trying to aim at for it to begin with. So. Um, let's see, the reload speed is absolutely batshit terrible, and, um, yeah, and on top of that, it, it kind of costs a lot, so. On top of, but to be honest, the XK is a lot of fun to use, because at close range, it actually, it actually is very, very good, and, um, surprisingly good, in fact, and on top of that, the fact that it can get you random models almost on a very consistent basis is also an added perk about the XK8, and, um, uh, we're you know, a weird kind of quirkiness to it that I really enjoy because <laughs> you're talking to a person who hardly gets headshots all the time. So, anyways, so the SK8, if you have not, you guys not, if you guys have not tried it out uh, thus far, I highly recommend you use it. But that's because I just have a bias towards the uh, the XK8. That's a favorable one, and I really do love using the SK8. It's not my best assortment rifle, but it's definitely something I you know occasionally use from time to time because uh, the SK8 is a lot of fun to use. And um, if you guys. Uh, don't like it, then I can understand. I can I understand completely why you don't like it because I mean the the XK8 just is just a walking you know pile of uh of problems to be honest that uh, that that should that assault rifle should not have but the SK8 has anyway. So unfortunately the SK8 does have its own uh, pile of uh, miseries, but to be to, you know for lack of a better term, but I mean. I can overlook that, and I can still use it pretty effectively, and ho I hopefully that you guys are be able to as well. So thank you guys very much for watching. I hope you guys will use the SK8 uh, in, uh, in recent times or in the future because it is quite the fun assault rifle. And even if you don't really do well with it, I mean, hey, at least you know how it feels like. So, anyways, guys, thanks for watching, and I will see you guys later. You appreciate it.